Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the video from the Demon Overlord. Today, I will be reviewing a set of miniatures I've been really looking forward to. I got myself a whole booster brick of these bad boys, and I look forward to opening them up using my demonic sword of opening. And take a look inside. They are the spooky set coming from Dungeons Dragons Icons of the Realm pre-painted line. Boneyard. With this lovely, nice ghost silhouette on there for the box. The sword of opening is really wanting to open them really soon. As you can see, it's getting antsy. Well, let's get started, shall we? And see what lovely undead zombies we pull from these boxes. First up, we have number 28, the Ogre Zombie. And as you can see, this is one good looking ogre zombie. Now, as you can see, he actually has some kind of little mutton chops going on there. He has lovely tattered fur. He has many old bruised, bloodied areas and damaged spots on his body, which make it look great. He even had some type of little necklace going on there. So this guy has some like kind of style for an undead and looks nice. You can see he's got the definite pale skin you get after being dead for a while. And I love all the damage he has. It makes him look really ro like he's been through the lap been through the gutter and my goodness he has a great pose the only possible thing i could see wrong with this is i wish he was holding a bone in his hand for a club he has so much lovely personality and great detail paint job going on there he looks fantastic let's see what miniatures accompanied him in his box shall we next up we have an awesome number 21 the death slod now it's interesting how slods are in this undead box set I'm not certain if they're really undead, but I mean, this guy does cause death wherever he goes, and they are undying. The only way to eliminate a death slot is by forcibly killing it through battle. So it's a very intriguing creature. And I must say, I wish he was a little bit darker like he is in the book, but you know what? For a slot, he looks terrifying. That pose is menacing. Those white milky eyes literally look through your soul as he starts ripping you to bloody shreds with those nasty talons and shows the other slots why he is a boss. I must say, I love this pose compared to the unpainted version, which I do own and have painted. This guy has a lovely silhouette as well as a lovely paint job. Now, like I said, the only thing is I wish he was a little darker in the back like he is in the book, but hey, they're allowed to take liberties at WizKids because they knocked this one out of the park. The paint job looks fantastic. Let's get to the next medium class guy or smaller they put in with that ogre and see what we're getting. And remember, this is still only box number one. Next up, we have the Will O Wisp, number four of 45. And I love the translucency going on here. And you can see his base is a slight a little bit of a curve. So it's not a peg, but it's that new flight stand they do. And actually, the translucency works great. I like it. It's not like the old one where it was like a weird little cluster ball with or that green energy. I like the clear energy. It looks more unique and looks more like a couple of dancing lights, which a Will O Wisp looks like in the book. So honestly, I like it. It looks quite good. And these would be great to throw at your players to make them confused and possibly put them in the traps of other creatures hoping to take them down. As they say, death likes company. Let's get to the last one of the first box, shall we? Next up, we have number 36 out of 45, the Mummy Lord. Now, why do I like this miniature? Well, let's be honest, he looks quite impressive. I love this dynamic pose of him in like mid casting of a spell. As a matter of fact, the green spell energy coming up for his hand is quite impressive nonetheless. His, I wanted to say a cowl, but his headpiece looks good. It's not too shiny. It has just that right amount of grunge that you would expect from something that's been dead for thousands, for some thousands of years. And honestly, it's great to get a mummy lord, as I only have never really thought of using mummies in my game, not only because we don't really go to the desert that often, but because I don't have a Mummy Lord miniature. Now I do, and he looks really fantastic. I got to give WizKids credit. They have just been bumping out some amazing paint jobs in these last sets they've been doing, and I hope this continues. It makes opening these boxes so much more worth it to open these lovely pieces. Now let's get out to box number two, shall we? Next up for box number two, we have number 32 of 45, this undead hill giant skeleton and as you can see he looks awesome actually it's hill giant skeleton my apologies i added the undead part but as you can see he looks quite impressive for a skeleton he's simple just like his hill giant's living counterpart he only simply has the rags on his lower part which cover his well 
nothing at this point since he's nothing but a hip girdle. And then you can see his large ribs, which tells me that hill giants must have a large set of lungs, which makes sense when they need a lot of air to move around that large bulk of theirs. Even in death, it seems they are only intelligent enough to probably pick up a great club, which looks in this case like a large tree, possibly even a rock. But I think that's a tree section. I think, it, yeah, well, it has to be a tree section. But it is a lovely bone job. They, they have done a lot of nice shadowing in the crevices of the bone, and he looks quite terrifying. And if you see that face, my goodness, that is one aggressive face. He kind of pulls a Deadpool. He's putting a lot of expression through that eyebrowless face and able to see this terrifying anger on him. My goodness, what a big beefy boy. He's probably going to be special, just like his uh, skeletal frost giant and skeletal fire giant brothers in the set, which means they need to now do a stone giant skeleton, possibly in the next set, to keep up with it. Who knows? WizKids likes to keep us guessing, and Wizards of the Coast makes those calls. So let's see what came with him in the box, shall we? Awesome! This is great! I'm glad that I got this guy. It is the Bone Whelk, number 41 of 45. And as you can see, he's one awesome-looking snail. Now, I love how he kind of gives me that Monster Hunter feel, where he takes the old corpses and bones of old monsters, well, in this case, bones are more like it, and probably combines them into a special shell for him to travel in. I also love the red teeth in his maw. It makes him look interesting. And the color helps separate him from his probably relative, the Flail Snail. Now, I don't know if that means you can break the bone armor apart on his back to get to his organs underneath. I'm not really sure how it works. I'm going to have to look into bone whelks. I love that I have the awesomeness of the flail snail itself. I have the thresher snail from Reaper, and now I have the bone whelk, another type of big snail monster. And honestly, he may not have the colors of his flail snail brother, but my goodness, he has a creepy vibe all his own, and I am glad that I got him into my miniature library. Now let's move on, and oh, one more thing, I am kind of shocked that WizKids didn't say this, but you actually have a chance of getting a large and a huge. He came with my hill giant skeleton, an interesting combination. Could there be more? Let's find out later in the video, shall we, and see if any more pop up with these bigs combined in a box. Next up, we have number three of 45, the Crawling Claw. Now, in honesty, there really isn't too much about this miniature. They could have done some more visceral on the end of the hand there, but they kind of didn't. I'll give WizKids a little bit of a hit here. They kind of dropped the ball on the Crawling Claw. They could have made it a different color than that green. As you can see, that green doesn't really pop. Nothing pops on this thing, and it's kind of sad. But you know what? It is a good hand needed. It's sort of some of the intellect of ours. It's good enough for what it is. I would have liked a little bit more unique, like I said, a little more visceral, a little more bone sticking out of where the arm used to be attached. The fingernails are barely painted a different color of green. So in the end, it could have been better. So sorry, WizKids, on this one, it might not, it could have been better. That's all I'm going to say. But, you know, I don't have a crawling claw, so it's not the end of the world. So it is still a good miniature and nice to get to add to the collection for some undead options. Moving on. So here we have another lovely undead, number 12 out of 45, the Vampire Spawn. Now that's always a good thing. We need more vampires underlings, which spawns are lower level vampires that usually get killed off by adventures before they go for the boss. And these are the guys that also do the running for them, like, you know, going and getting fresh corpses, bringing them back alive. So their bosses have nice fresh blood. The nice flowing of the fresh blood is what they after, and they send their spawns to do it. I do like how this guy actually has the full facial hair on him. He's not just some clean face spawn like I've seen before. And it's nice to see that he actually has some more tattered clothes to show the fact that he's a spawn and he doesn't look too fancy. As remember, spawns are lower level vamps. They don't get nice noble clothing normally unless they've worked hard to earn it. And he definitely screams a slowly servant vampire, which is what he is. And he looks good and a nice addition and needed for the inventory of undead to throw at your party. Now let's get on to box number three, shall we? With this great pull we've been getting so far. So here we have another undead skeletal beast, the Warhorse Skeleton, number 29 out of 45. And you know what? He looks quite good. I do have the spell effect for that magical undead horse you can summon or the spectral horse, but I like this one better to represent an undead skeletal horse because it just looks nice. I like the curled legs because, you know, without the musculature, the legs would kind of go all over the place. The torn saddle, the, like, leather straps used to hold them down are just flopping. He even has some lovely head armor going on there. And I love the just deep sockets of the eyes. They add more to that just deep death feeling. 
So really a great miniature. Yes, it's a simple Warhorse skeleton, but you know what? He looks really cool, and undead animals are something we don't have enough in the game. Because not only do you get undead zombies, you get undead animals. A necromancer can't just summon skeletons all the time. Eventually, there's not enough human corpses. Gotta bring back the animals and say a horse is bigger and technically stronger than your average human. After all, this is a war horse. This is a horse made for war. So now he's a war horse skeleton. He's ready to run you over and then stomp you into the ground. Or with his armored helmet, just headbutt you. Or just back kick you. Options. So very nice miniature. He was not something I was intending to get in the draw, but hey, very nice. And I like him. So let's move on and see what he came with in his box. And this is box number three. Next up, we have a great undead that I was actually hoping to get after I got that Mummy Lord. Number 20 out of 45, the Mummy. And you know what? He has a great sculpt versus the old Mummy. And he has like, I don't know if those are ear sculpts, but those might just be like the bandage wrapping spots. But you know what? He has so much personality going on. He's got some little bit of like some bling going on in the chest or some rot. He's got those like bloody hands, so he's definitely been busy killing. He also has it on the toes, so maybe that's like old skin that's just mummified. Not sure, but, you know, I also like that he has an open mouth. My older Mummy Mini, the only one I have otherwise, is from the old Monster Menagerie. And this definitely beats that one out of the water. It has a great dynamic movement. It has lovely sculpting. And honestly, it's great that I have them. I'll use them both, of course, with my Mummy Lord if I ever decide to use them in a game. Because, you know, what Mummy Lord does not summon mummies and dead things to fight for him. But I might have to get some more mummies if I don't happen to get some more duplicates in this one. Though I am hoping to go against duplicates. We'll see. Very awesome. Now let's get to the next medium to small in the box. Next up, we have another undead warrior, I guess. It is number 11 out of 45, the Drowned Assassin. Now, I do love how he has one boot missing and one boot on. That's kind of funny. His clothes are all tattered, as you'd expect from a corpse floating in water for a while, as he is drowned and undead. But, you know, there's one thing I can't quite discern if I like or not. And then it's this giant growth on his right. Now, I don't know about the Drowned Assassin stats, if they're like, if that's what they're supposed to have, or if this is a special variant. But at the same time, I do like the slightly bluish pale skin. It's what you get when someone dies in water. After a while, their corpse gets weirdly washed out. <laughs> no pun intended. But I think if I was running this, if, until I look it up, right now I'd assume maybe it's full of, like, water. And maybe they, like, when they hold you down in the thing, they grapple you and then spew water into your throat to try and drown you. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. Man, that's actually very messed up. Even the Demon Overlord's kind of like, ooh, that's messed up. Well, anyway, not a bad miniature. So, you know, pretty cool. Interesting uh, use of an assassin. Maybe someone in the group dies that way. They can become one as an interesting change. So pretty cool. Uh, let's get on with the last uh, miniature of this box. Now, here is a character with some personality, class, sculpt, and all the numbers hit. This is the Vampire Spellcaster, number 17 of 45. And not only are we getting a Spellcaster and a Vampire, we're getting a Tiefling Vampire. That's very uncommon. I don't think I've ever seen a Vampire Tiefling before. But it makes sense to happen, as vampirism can affect almost any humanoid. Even, I think it can even affect giants. So, I mean, like, why couldn't it affect a Tiefling? Just because they have some demonic blood in them doesn't mean they're immune to the curse or or devil blood, whichever one. And I really like the dynamic look here. This has to be a rare miniature. It has to be, because, I mean, look at her detail quality. She is impressive. And, yes, it looks, it is a she. And I like that, because it's giving her some power. Mm, power to the women with this one, guys. Woo! I like it. The Demon Overlord, likey. Look at all of her coolness and whatnot. She's got the freaking presence. Demon Overlord respects fellow presence. I like the spell effect it has a night or that like mist effect it looks cool like she's coming out of the mist like the old vampire movies where he slowly floats out of the mist oh i love that whiz kids if you were going for the old nostalgia feel you got me for sure and i love it this miniature is definitely up near the favorites of my pulls oh awesome now let's get on to box number four shall we oh my goodness i did not know this miniature was in the set i completely actually forgot that i saw someone talk about this until like I just literally remember that someone did, and I'm just shocked. I actually got the Elder Oblex, a miniature I had forgotten about that was in the set, and I'm so glad I did it. This is number 43 out of 45, and oh my goodness, look how awesome he looks. That slight translucency allows some light through it. It gives him those little crackles of translucency in there to go around the faces. He even comes with a lovely puppet. Now, mine did actually come with no issues. I think I've heard 
one person and when they did a review thing of like they got the whole set to review because wizard sent them a special thing they said there's damage mine is in perfect shape and nothing's wrong and i love the puppet he's simple he's not assuming that's the point how awesome is it going to be to have an elder oblex that's going to mess with your party and possibly even take them over some of them over as puppets to make matters worse i love that whiz kids this one oh this one was pulled up and executed perfectly. This literally makes the exact representation of the book. And I love how this was created by a kid's like wish thing. Like he made this and it, you know what? It's I, if the kid could see this, if the kid sees this now, or, you know, if he could, this would be amazing. Like, I hope that people respect this awesome work of art. This is not just a measure. This is art. It's rare when you can make a slime and turn it into something so epic on the board. This thing just is awesome. I know I'm gushing over an Elder Oblex, but the Elder Oblex is something I really now am glad that I pulled. Well, let's go on to the miniatures that accompanied him in this box. And remember, this is box number four. Now, here we have an undead miniature number six, the Ghast. And you know what? It literally feels like a reskin of the older Ghast from Monster Menagerie. The difference is the pose is a little more dynamic. He's a little cleaner on his line work than the one I got. But there is one thing here coming as his head turns. You see that big slice in his head? I'm not sure what was going on there, but whiz kids, come on. Ugh, it just, it ruins it. Like when you see that from the front, he looks good. From the back, he looks fine. But then from the side, it just looks weird. Oh, he has this giant slice at the top of his head. It looks like someone's already decapitated him. Or his head's about to fall off in that joke with like the Hobbit where like that gnome or the goblin sits there and goes, Ooh, and Gandalf pushes his head off. It feels like that's about to happen to this guy. It's just, uh, I mean, he's great, great overall, but that one slice is my only pet peeve about this guy, but it's not bad to get more gas. They're a more powerful version of the ghoul, so more ghouls to have for my queen ghoul to rule and command and vampires to control, so definitely useful, definitely good. Now, here we have your standard zombie, number 14 out of 45. I think if I remember correctly, someone said there were a lot of zombies in this, and it looks like this guy is standing out he's got a lot of like some armor with some orange coming out not sure if he's supposed to be an elf or a human his ears have a little bit of a point to him so if he's an elf you could use him to be a zombie drow or even a zombie high elf that's just you know the hair's gone white after death for so long or he was really old when he died so i mean like pretty cool i like it i mean he even has that curvature of the blade that you see in elven blades so I do think this is an elf zombie, which, you know what, it's good to see zombies of other races than just humans. There's always a lot of human zombies, but we need more other race zombies. It makes it kind of feel more, you know, balanced since the world has so many other races in it. I know humans dominate as they're almost everywhere, but elves are up there too. They live in a lot of places too. And this guy has a lot of personality. I kind of like him doing the whole reaching for you, like, help me. But then all of a sudden he just goes, hey -ya! and stabs you. And you're like, oh, dang it, last time I ever tried to help the undead except putting him back in the ground. Ugh. I like him. So let's move on to the last one of that box, shall we? Okay, good thing I put him on there during pause, because when I picked him up out of the box, I had to double take and almost triple, actually I triple taked, because I wasn't sure what he is. Now, yes, he is number one out of 45, another one of the zombie crew, but there's something about him I don't understand, or at least I didn't until I thought about it for literally a couple of minutes. This is not a zombie human. Because I wanted to think it was a human or something, but now, but then I put him next to my other zombie and my other human miniatures, and I realized that's a Goliath miniature. It's a zombie Goliath. I was like, what? You gotta be kidding me. I never saw that coming. And I like his design. Now, I mean, like, a lot of you are probably like, what's all the black marks and the slightly Joker-looking, like, face paint? That's the blood, and then it's like he's got those Goliath marks that I guess must be decaying and i love the big chunk out of his shoulder right up there you can see the chunk just taken out of his shoulder so i mean like and this guy actually looks like a miniature of the goliath not too long ago this looks like the goliath fighter from the goliath unpainted goliath set and i've actually painted this guy so to me dang i could be using this if my goliath character died in the game i could use this to represent a revenant of him if i asked the dm can i become a revenant i could use this as my miniature so this actually works great and i mean the paint job at first really threw me. I'm not a big fan of the like line work on him. I wish it was a little cleaner. I know he's dead, but I feel like the lines on a Goliath are a little cleaner than that. I know that he's dead. They wouldn't be as well up kept. So like, you know, and I get it, but you know what? Overall for what he is, he's useful. He has a place. And like I said, new races being zombie eyes. So you know what? It works good. I like him. 
after I had to think about it. But once you think about it, you like him. He grows on you. So anyway, let's get on to our next box, shall we? Okay, I don't know what this horror is, but I'm going to have to look up his details in the book. Here we have number 30 out of 45, The Skittering Horror. And man, if you were afraid of bug-like creatures that skitter and critter and crawl around, man, this guy is not going to be your friend. He's a huge class creature. He has a lovely swoop aerial base there. And goodness, that is a lot of legs. It's like someone took a centipede and mixed it with like an elder horror from Cthulhu because he's got the tendril face there. He's got that single piercing yellow eye. Man, that is one horrific monster. And for a horror, that's a good thing. But man, he is one weird beastie. And you know what? He fits with this. He's a horror. This is a horror-based set, and my goodness. I didn't expect to draw him, nor was I looking forward to, but man, now that I have him, I'm glad that I got him. He looks cool. He looks great, and I like him. He has such a dynamic pose going on. These poses that WizKids are starting to do for all their miniatures is looking better and better. The dynamics here look great. Even something as simple as this creature, because of his paint job, is simple. But man, his pose and stuff makes it work beautifully. So dang, Wiz kids, well done. First, you shot me with that piece of our Oblex. You've made every miniature so far of joy to open and just view and oh, just a joy. Now let's see what miniatures accompany this big skittering beastie into my collection. So here we have number two, the skeleton. And I'm not kidding you, that's just what it is, a skeleton. But you know what's interesting? He's an archer skeleton. But not only is he an archer skeleton like in some of the older sculpts, he has clothes and some armor. He looks more like a dead adventurer. You could literally say, to make it more interesting to your viewers and all that, yeah, or the players, you find a corpse. He looks very similar to an adventurer you met a year or two ago. Oh my goodness, like the players might have that realization. I knew this guy. He was a ranger. How did he die? And why is he now an undead skeleton shooting arrows at us? It's nice to see skeletons getting some, like, more of a class look. I mean, you might even, maybe your DM would allow you to play a skeleton. You could be a skeleton ranger. Interesting flavor. But really, a nice character to throw at your players and make their lives an undead nightmare. Very nice. And remember, we are on box number five. So let's continue on and see what other miniatures accompany the big bang skittering horror, as I feel this guy would be riding on his back shooting arrows. Next up, we have number eight of 45, the dread horror. And I like his design. I love how he's going from a cloudy mist into a more solid, dark, shadowy shape. He also has that creepy nightmare guy you would see during Halloween scaring your kids with that darkened entire shadow body with the piercing white face eye parts that make you just go Ugh, and feel uncomfortable i mean you can imagine this guy being in your room when you wake up from asleep and him staring you down the face that would be quite unnerving so definitely filling you with dread and i like that they kind of gave him a little aspect of clothing underneath in the skull very nice whiz kids very nice wizard of the coast should feel honored that they do such great work for them on bringing these creatures to life in miniature form very nice so this one's really quick. Uh, we did get our first duplicate, took five boxes in, but we got another of the Crawling Claw. So that's all I'm going to say. Not much else. It looks exactly the same as the other one. They're not much different. The nails, as you can see on the ends, are just a little bit lighter, but that's it. Let's move on to the next box, shall we? What a shame that we got a duplicate, but that's not too bad. It took five boxes in to get one. Now here we have a classic D&D aberration, the Atou, or Otua, however you say it, I'm not perfect at it, but this big slimy, trashy sewer beast, man, what a dirty boy, and he definitely looks it. I like the line work going on there in his sculpt, it looks quite nice with the shadow work and all that, it makes him look like he's a grimy, filthy savage, which he is, and it's just weirder to think that if he bites you, he's not just biting you with his mouth, he's biting you with... Technically, his backside is that's also where he releases his leavings. Yeah, aberrations are weird. Similar to the, his fellow aberration, the Beholder, once you think about it, gets weirder. But I do like the uh, spikes on the mouth, more spike-like teeth, the spikes on the tendrils, and the eye part in the center one. It's very nice. I like it. And it will match well with the other toes I actually already have, which was from the board game of... of I think it was Elemental Evil. Well, anyway, 
and then I had like one from Etsy. So he'll work really well as another Ato because maybe I could have an Ato breeding cycle where the group walks in and uh, makes an awkward discovery as like these guys then turn on them and eat them with their disgusting selves. Ugh. Demon Overlord would never have these things serve him. They're just too disgusting. Unless they serve me in the sewers and eat the garbage in the trash. That might be fine. So let's move on to what miniatures accompany this big, bad, slimy germ factory. So here we have a classic undead, number 18 out of 45, the ghost. Very plain and simply, but you know what? She looks so dynamic in this pose. I do have the older Monster Menagerie ghost, and this one blows her out of the water. She looks really cool. She's got stuff going on. She's got more personality. She's got way more epic look to her. She looks more like she'd be the top ghost, and the other ghost would be more of like her lackey. I do, like I said, I love their switching, to, like going away completely from pegs, these nice little uh, bend swirls for their flight bases they look so much better and they are so much more sturdy but it's really cool to see a ghost like this now i'm still waiting to see ghosts that are of different races like a goliath ghost a furball ghost even a gnome ghost something different because we always seem to get like a humanoid female ghost i haven't seen even a male ghost really that much yet but you know the future is written in stone and it'd be nice to see what whiz kids can create later but this is still a is probably now my favorite of all the ghost miniatures out there even my ghost ones from the reaper bones barge set still this one is very very well done moving on strangely enough as if we're going down the numbered order here's number 19 out of 45 the wraith and you know his design is interesting it's different than the wraith from tyranny of dragons but i like it he has a shadow feel to me, but those yellow piercing eyes, those eyes, they just make you want to focus on them and then feel uncomfortable and go, man, if I see that guy in the dark alley or in, behind me in night, I'm going to be running. I mean, except me, I'm the demon overlord. I'd turn and be like, bow down to your overlord. How dare you? I mean, after all, that's the point. Look at this guy, though. He, I love the kind of flow. He has a flow like smoke which I did notice when it just hit that angle and the rotating, it really looks good. Guys, WizKids has really stepped up their like productions. These things are really looking good as a sign that D&D is evolving over time, even the miniatures. Man, good mini. Good mini for a simple creature, but good mini. And for some reason, continuing along the ghostly theme, uh, we have the Poltergeist, number nine out of 45. And you know what? This one is playfully kind of charming as well as interesting. It has no body to it. It just has some like translucent piece to represent moving stuff we have like a teapot or something or a, like a pitcher spilling water we got like a candle being thrown for fire and then a goblet that looks like it's being thrown with liquid in it yeah and then it's on a table it's like all tilty like that table is not even just being thrown it's actually tilting so like maybe the poltergeist has possessed it i don't know but you could also use this for a living table which i just thought about off the top of my head for an animated object you could use as a living table and it's just throwing whatever's on it at your party. So it'd be interesting. It's multi-useful. And actually, it's playfully charming. I like it. It's charmingly playful. Very nice, Wiz Kids. Very nice. You made this really come to life with a nice, dynamic, playful pose. I like it. And I look forward to using this in a campaign at some point. Really nice. Really nice. Now let's get on to box number seven. Now, I was on box number seven. I was hoping to get the zombie dinosaur or the Cyberx, but no, we've got one that I actually did not remember that was in the set, similar to the Oblax, another slime creature, the Elder Black Pudding, number 31 out of 45. And I must say, for a Black Pudding, I like his design. The reason I like it now, once again, it is doing an envelopment, which the book does not say Black Puddings do this, but I mean, if they fall on top of you in a wave crashing like this, yeah, you're pretty much enveloped. It's not really like it's going to push you into the wall because at that point there's nowhere to go. You can only inhabit one space and it's going to, it's going to put you apart. But now, right now he is eating the undead assassin just because he can be. And as well as I also want to say that is my undead assassin's edition as well. I did get a duplicate of him. So I was using this as well as his, uh, the fact he's a duplicate. But you know what? Yeah, I know he's eating my duplicate. No, I might need him. But anyway, I, I mean, to a black pudding, regardless of elder or not, Food is food, doesn't matter if it's dead or not. So it's very interesting they put a black pudding, and I like his sculpt. I like the wave and the crest feel of it. And I like that it's not as shiny as his black pudding brothers from Monster Menagerie. It's got more of like, it's ready to split at any moment into its smaller puddings. Since I have a bunch of black pudding of the regular size, that's great. If the group splits him, I have some to split. So 
that's really cool and i like it it's not what i expected and it's a shame that means either the cybrex or the t-rex or possibly the mind witness isn't going to be picked up but hey a nice surprise and a nice at least alternate so really cool let's get on with the rest of the two that were part of his set just because like i said that is the duplicate that is in the set and i just didn't feel like giving him his own slot he gets to be fodder for the pudding here we have an awesome miniature number 16 out of 45 the specter now comparing him to the specter monster menagerie i like him a little bit more he's more solid to the base he's not on a small peg he has a lot darker design the one of the other one was very light colored and it kind of bled together this one you can clearly see the body it's also branching away from the giant cloud which gives it its own presence feel of the body versus the cloud and i like it i love the big white hair to the dark purple it has so much contrast that screaming face it just fills you with a momentary feeling of dread. Like, that's something you should have in a haunted house, a giant purpley, folk, like, shadow wall, and out jumps this body with so much contrast, but yet still blends in. It's very nice, and I gotta give WizKids credit. They made this really good, and it's evolved for sure from its older counterpart. So let's get to the last miniature of this box. Yeah, next one up, we have a weird one. I don't know what it is, and I'm gonna have to look it up again because just its weirdness. The spawn of Kius or Kios? Kios or Kius, however you say it, and he is number 10 out of 45. He's interesting in design. I don't know if those are pustules, if it's a slime that's growing over him. He's a spawn, so he's served something or served some goal, but man, he's a really weird looking miniature. I mean, he looks like he has hair or maybe a hat. He's got what's left of clothes, like it's enveloping him, so I don't know what's going on. But for something that I don't know what's going on, it does give me a creep factor. It makes me feel like a zombie. But, like, the zombie horde then affects you and spreads its disease. So, I mean, this is one that I go, like, oh, gosh. If I saw this, I'd be like, kill it, kill it, burn it with fire, disintegrate it. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> nuke the darn thing to stop its spread of its disease. Like, this thing is crazy. It looks like it belongs in Warhammer following uh, evil Nurgle and his other spawny abominations of disease and pestilence. Like, goodness gracious. Very nice, whiz kids. It gave me that weird feeling. Let's move on to the final box and the heaviest, so to speak. Still hoping for one of the, the Mind Witness, the Zombie T-Rex, or the Cybrex. So I'm starting with the little guys of it because they actually fell out of the box first. So I'll get to the big guy last, and he'll be the ender of the show. And here we have a skeleton. This is number two out of 45, and it's a gnome skeleton. And I like it. I like that they gave a gnome or a halfling got a, a miniature. Now, I think it's actually more a halfling because he feels a little too tall to be a gnome. But you could easily just say it's a gnome skeleton anyway. And it's nice. I like the uh, hair holding on to the back of the skull, the little axe. And he still actually has clothes. Like, it's kind of cool. I find it interesting that his clothes didn't waste away with the rest of his flesh. But who am I? I mean, bugs probably ate the flesh in decomposition. Those flesh-eating beetles might have done it. I don't know. But it's pretty cool. I like him. Nice little creepy little critter. Kind of has a little skeleton Chucky going on there now that I think about it. Nothing's worse than you look back on. He's on your shoulders just going, <laughs> as he starts cutting into you. And it's like, oh, gosh, throw this thing off me and break his skull open. OK, let's move on to the next of the uh, medium to small characters. Here we have number 13 out of 45, the Phantom Warrior. And you know what? He's the unlucky 13, as he was the warrior that must have died in battle and became a phantom that now is probably being used by a necromancer, someone who summoned him back from the land of the dead, to fight in his behalf. Now, he could be a paladin, could be a fighter. Don't think he's a barbarian. His barbarians don't really use shields. So he's definitely one of those two classes. I mean, could be maybe a cleric with a shield, but most likely he's a paladin or a fighter that perished in battle. Most likely a fighter, as most paladins kind of go to their god once they die. But really nice. I like the detail on the shield, even though it's like a ghost shield. He's got lovely, like, wisp effects coming off him. He's very translucently nice. Sword's a only a slight fraction warp, so I'll probably just hit it with a little hot water, and that'll probably bend it right back. I probably won't even mess with it. It's not that noticeable but honestly as you can see he's a lovely sculpt and a very nice miniature now let's get on to the last of the medium to small guys of the box now here we have an awesome miniature one that i actually wanted as i saw in the box number 23 out of 45 the avatar of death in other words, a Grim Reaper. I love the spectral scythe in his hand. It's it kind of has more of a unique feel to it than the old classic wooden stick and a scythe. And you know what? I like the little chain there, the little like bits and bobbles hanging off it. His sort of flowing, it almost looks like he's the witch on the broom type pose. 
and the flight base looks good and he is solid on there which is great now you don't see his face his face actually has a the heavy shadow effect on top so you can't really see it that well but for the grim reaper that's normal seeing his whole face is a sign that your soul is going to the next stop so to speak either heaven or the underworld and with it being DD, you never know which version of your nirvana you're going to you could be going to mechanist if you were a neutrality mechanist guy i don't know but i love it i mean like you can see just enough of the eye sockets but the rest of it's got that shadow effect it looks good i like the uh hand coming forward like that like he looks like he's flying towards you to grab your soul and pick you up and manhandle you like a boss and put you where you go just he has presence and i hope he's a rare like the uh vampire spellcaster he's got to be rare with this nice sculpt going on there he's got to be special and like i said i will be looking up these miniatures now before i get to the big guy at the end i do want to do a quick thing guys if you have not subscribed please do and make sure you hit that notification bell to all notifications that way you're updated all of my videos that i post in the future on miniatures being my main focus of my channel but i will do videos on other things such as some nerf and other things i enjoy as well as maybe just hanging with the friends or hanging with my podcast the dice and dummies also check out our podcast the dice and dummies guys we're hoping to start season three here and make it live so you could ask questions in person and if you have any like thoughts or anything you want to talk about we'll maybe talk about it if it's important enough now also hit leave a like if you enjoy the channel helps my channel greatly that's why i definitely recommend to subscribe and join the overlords viewers yes join my subscribers become more powerful Become demons. I know, that was a joke on Become Monkey, just for the record. <laughs> now, let's get to the big, final, big daddy of the box set of my brick. Oh my goodness, sorry. I just really, I'm just so shocked when I see this thing. I'm so glad that I got this guy. Number 42 out of 45, the Cybrex. And oh man, I like his sculpt. I was concerned they were going to make it too much like the book with so much red and orange. But I'm glad they gave him more flesh Tony look because he's supposed to be like a giant lump of flesh and pieces like and he looks cool. I love the leaking liquids of their translucencies. I love the giant chains that are made to hold him down. You can see him across his back and parts. He has like I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the cloth over there by the flight base there, but it is a nice effect. It looks cool. It actually almost makes me think of like a beard like he's a giant head. I mean, you got like that weird hole there. Maybe that's supposed to be like an ear and he's supposed to be like a giant head and that's beard there. I don't know, but man, this thing's awesome. I can see why demons hold these things with regard as I think if I remember correctly, these things like live at the spawn pools for demons and spawn demons there. So man, he just looks so good. I know it's like you're gushing over a mini, but he looks so good. Oh, such a great miniature. I did not get my zombie T-Rex and I did not get the mind witness, but I did get the Cybrex and he's definitely probably the rare of the box. Him and the mind witness are probably up there being the rarest of the box. And I got to say, he looks fantastic. WizKids, you literally hit a grand slam in his design. It makes me want to buy him if I didn't pull him. My goodness. So great. Anyway, guys, like I said, subscribe to the channel helps more than you know. Anyway, guys, I think that's all I've got for you today. Have a great one. Hope to see you next time, and Demon Overlord signing out. Bye-bye.